Are you guys ready? Yeah. Wanna hear some stories? When it comes to storytelling, there's no better place to do it than the moth. Telling the story of the moth is just terrifying, but it's just the most exhilarating thing you'll ever do. I get that major adrenaline rush about this. It is kind of torture in a way, but I'll sign up for it. I'm one of those people like, yeah, bring that on. People come to see a moth show because they see themselves on that stage and they hear their stories and there's a, a unique connection that happens that I don't think you get when you're on Facebook. It's just a single person standing on stage with a microphone. You don't have notes, you don't have a cheat sheet, you don't have anything up in front of you. And when you are vulnerable, the audience responds because they feel that kind of connection. You're not putting up a shield. This idea of just pure storytelling. It's just so moving and so simple and so perfect. We have these amateur slams, we call them, which are just nights where anybody can come in and put a name in a hat. And then we're gonna choose 10 names during the night and everybody gets to tell a five minute story. I love the slams. There's an energy about them that's just so much fun. Um, so immediate and anything could happen. The folks that come up are often folks who've never told a story in public before and some of them go on to be our champion moth raconteurs. I listened to all the slams in all the different cities, listening for stories that we could put on the main stage. As far as storytelling goes, the main stage is the major leagues. It's like playing for the Yankees here. In New York, we produced the Moth main stage at a couple different venues. One is just under 300 capacity. But then there's another place, and it's called Cooper Union, and it's about 900 seats, and it's a, it's a little bit more intimidating. And so we usually bring people out to those shows to tell stories who can really handle the space and have a certain kind of energy um, or gusto about them. On the Moth main stage, we invite five people to take the stage and tell 10-minute stories on a given theme. So we have a show coming up called Laws of Attraction, Stories of Chemistry, and we invite five different people who have different takes, different perspectives on the theme. Basically, my wife got sick, I took care of her for a year, and I wrote a book about it. And a couple of friends were like, you should try promoting this book. And I was like, I'd love to be on The Moth. I love this show, I'd love to do it. So I was looking for how to do it. And I heard about their pitch line, and I wrote up what would be a one minute synopsis of my story. And then I got an email from Meg, and she said, I listened to it, I love it, let's talk about it. The pitch line is amazing. It's like my favorite part of my job right now. People call and tell us some of the most amazing moments of their lives, and I get to call them back. <laughs> Is there anybody who's dying to go first to get it over with? Maybe one of our veterans? I listen better if I get this out of the way. Okay. Okay. All right. Go. Right. <clears throat> you go. One second. My rehearsal experience with the moth always is just magical. We're in this beautiful apartment with um, all of these creatives and five storytellers, and it just becomes this cocoon, this place, it's like a safe haven or a sanctuary where we can tell these incredibly moving stories. When you're working with a storyteller, there are just certain things that really draw the audience in and make a story compelling. So we work on finding those elements and then trying to craft a narrative arc around that. And I have the scar and I have a stack of cards addressed to Sean. <laughs> they made suggestions saying, could you emphasize this and maybe cut that? It was such a, a family feeling thing. <laughs> it, it was as if one of my kids was talking to me saying, well, Mama, if you did this, it would be better. I'd love for Kentucky to come early, like right when you talk about your parents and Bibles and, you know, yes. so if yes. you mentioned Kentucky earlier, but I thought it was great. You gotta trust the Moth Girls, they're good. They could give me some real positive notes about tighten this up, trim this up, expand on that a little bit. And over the last couple of years and all these shows I've done, I learned to trust them. They know what they're doing, they're pretty good. So when they give me notes uh, about something, I listen. 
in the next 24 hours as we get on our way to this main stage event. I'm gonna run the story a couple of times. I'm gonna run it in front of at least one more friend um, and a couple times on the phone, but I'm really gonna try to distract myself a little bit as well because uh, I don't wanna get in my head about it. I don't actually think I'm gonna obsess about it until about 4.30, an hour before I have to be at the event, and then I'm gonna start freaking out and I will be a nervous wreck until I go on stage. When I accept a, a, an invitation to speak, I, I say, oh, sure. But then about 10 minutes beforehand, I say, what am I doing here? And I get a bad case of nerves and I find my hands are shaking like this. I feel a, a lot of anxiety when my storytellers take the stage. It's kind of like what I imagine a mother would feel like because you've spent so much time and energy with each storyteller that you've directed, and you know what the storyteller is capable of. The doors open at 6.30, and that should be a nice opportunity for me to get to like hang out with the friends who are there and schmooze and stuff. Instead, I'm gonna be like doing my best to avoid talking to anyone and invent reasons like, oh, I'm gonna go talk to someone when I don't have to go talk to anyone. I just need to get out of there, you know? And almost like hide backstage. Right before the show, you're always nervous. I mean, I don't care how many shows you do, you're always nervous. Me, I'm usually pacing backstage, you know, rehearsing. I'm going over that a couple of lines in my head again and again and again to make sure I got it. The host gets up there, you get in your seat, and uh, you wait for him to call your name. And you just get up on stage and bang it out, man. You just give it to the audience, and whatever happens, happens.